so it's going to be here. Uh, this is a working collaboration with Isabel Maria Coates and Marcel Ollier from Politecnica de Catalunya and Laura Garcia from the University of Girona. So I want to talk about a very simple model, which is the restricted, uh, parabolic restricted free body problem, and I'm going to focus on the generation of bridges and plates. And first of all, I want to show you what is the, the motivation. The motivation is that when uh, uh, two uh, galaxies uh, have a close encounter, uh, they appear, or it appears, uh, bridges and tails. I'm not going to define concretely what's a bridge or a tail, but a bridge, I don't see if you can see here in this, in this uh, photo in the, the image, but it's like, a, let's say, a swarm or a, a path of particles of material in between the two galaxies after the, the, the close approach. Uh, Sometimes, uh, you cannot see it so very well, but this in, in recently this year, uh, there was published a paper saying that in between the two clouds of the Magellanic system, there are two bridges connecting the two, the, the two clouds. And a tail will be essentially the same. It's like a, a kind of a set of particles left behind one of the galaxies. You know, we, this, is, this will be a, 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 a tail, let's say. And our Motivation started with uh, when we discovered the, uh, the work of Tongre and Tongre back in the 1972. 1972, they uh, well these bridges and tails already were set, and they considered a very simple model, just the parabolic restricted free body problem, in which uh, you consider two point masses in parabolic orbits, and they consider a set of non-interacting particles around one of the bodies in circular orbits in direct or retrograde motion. They perform several uh, simulations, numerical simulations for direct and retrograde motions. And they, what they did was just simply follow, uh, integrate the equations, follow all of these particles and to observe that uh, most of the time some of the particles jump to the other primary, so some particles remain here in between, and the others were remaining here or were left behind one of the primaries. So uh, they observed that for different values of the mu parameter, the mass parameter, and for direct and retro uh, orbits, there appear bridges and tails, mostly in the retrograde cases. So we were interested in the uh, <coughs> dynamical explanation. What is the, what is the mechanism that in such a simple model, we can uh, explain the formation of bridges and tails. And this is a very simple model. And here, if I say a, a galaxy, uh, let me allow to, to use the term galaxy, but galaxy here means just a, 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 a body which is um, surrounded by a disk of non-interactive particles, and the two main bodies will be in parabolic orbits. OK, so. Yeah? Okay. So the plan of restricted uh, three body problem in the parabolic case, so it's a, uh, you all uh, well know the, the, the restricted three body problem. <coughs> so in this case, we have two parabolic orbits, two main bodies, M1 and M2. Uh, M0 is uh, any massless particle, not interacting with the, with the two main bodies. And um, R is the mutual uh, vector or position between the two particles or the distance. And recall that this distance becomes from infinity to the closest approach and then go to infinity again. So, so this quantity in, uh, decreases from infinity to the minimum and then increases again. So you write down the equations with the standard normalization of, of units, of distances, and, and, and then we change, we, we do the use of things. So first we change the rotating frame. So our framework is going to be, we're going to take the line that joins the two primaries. This is going to be our x axis. We are going to rescale the distance such that the primaries are going to be always at distance one. So we are doing a rescaling of, of, of distance at each, at each time. And uh, there is also the, the standard change of, uh, of time. So we change t as the, the, the real time, let's say, s is the fixtures time, and then we include another parameter. So when do these change variables, as you know, you uh, obtain a new uh, system of equations which is non-autonomous because the, uh, the, the primaries are in parabolic orbits. 
So one way to include the, this, this is a two and a half degree of freedom. So one way to include the, the time into the, the equations is just to add s dot equal to one. But this is, I mean, this is almost doing nothing. So we want to transform into an autonomous <coughs> system of equations, and we do it including this new variable, which is theta. And s is the time. So you see that you have here sine of theta equal tangent hyperbolic of, of s. So when s tends to minus or plus infinity, so when the two galaxies, or the two primaries are far apart, this uh, variable uh, goes from minus pi half to pi half. And the equations are that ones. So forget about the first one for a moment. So these are the two equations of motion. And as you can see here, this matrix, A of theta, if you don't include this theta here, this is the matrix, what you have is a matrix that depends on the tangent hyperbolic of S. So you cannot put here S equal to infinity. But when you introduce this new variable, what you obtain is this system, which is five dimensional, uh, and then you can introduce, it is, you have include the infinity into the equations. So what I'm saying is that these system of equations are regular at theta plus minus pi half, which in fact are invariants of this new equation. So you are adding the infinity at our model. So the first question is, why to add the infinity? Because what does it mean physically to add the infinity? The galaxies are really far apart. You want to study the close encounters. You want to study, you want to see why bridges and tails are formed just at the close encounter. And you're saying, okay, I'm interested in infinity. That is because the invariant objects, the important invariant objects, are born at the infinity precisely. I'm going to show you this. So the first thing, main properties of the, of the, the model. Uh, the first thing is that you have five technical points, in fact. This is because if you see the equations, to look for the equilibrium points, you have here theta plus minus uh, pi half. And then from here, this expression, this omega, is essentially <coughs> the potential of the circular restricted theoretical problem. It's the same. So you obtain the same equilibrium points, but twice. One at the, let's say, the boundary problem. This is the boundary problem. Let's say this is the computation of space x and y. This is this will represent the minus infinity, then this is theta equal to zero, which corresponds to the closest approach, and then you have the plus infinity. And we have here, this is, I, I, I only draw three equilibrium points, but you will have here, here five equilibrium points, then here five equilibrium points. You have homothetic <coughs> solutions connecting the equilibrium points. I'm going to level, it's just a, a matter of leveling. L1 will be the most on the, on the left, then one primary, L2 in the middle, then one priority, L3 at the, at the right. Just the way we, we have leveled the, the, the equilibrium points. And the important thing is that all of these equilibrium points are unstable. They have uh, stable and unstable manifolds, and the important ones are the collinear equilibrium points, L1, 2, and 3. Here you can see all, all way, only uh, the, the equilibrium at the upper boundary problem, Due to the reversibility of the problem, you, you, you have the same for the stable manifold at the boundary, lower boundary problem. And the important thing is that the unstable manifold is of dimension 1. It doesn't mean, I mean, it means something, but this uh, unstable manifold is contained in this layer. I mean, you, you must think that the, the flow goes from bottom to top. And once you are at the top, you, you cannot escape, you cannot return down. This is time. So this point here, L1, his, its unstable manifolds of dimension one is something that lives at infinity, nothing. But the important one is the stable manifold, which is of dimension four. For dimension one, that means it's going to separate different kinds of motion. That's important. The other important thing is that the Jacobi function. We, have here, we have here the same expression that in the circular restricted Fibonacci problem is a Jacobi function. I say function no constant because it's not constant. In this problem, this function, the derivative with respect time, is this expression. And uh, this is semi gradient property. First thing, there are no periodic orbits. That is all. That is the, the only invariant objects. I mean, when you want to study dynamics, what are you looking for? Equilibrium points, periodic orbits, invariant tori, invariant manifolds. Here we have only equilibrium points, no periodic orbits. Okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is that this is semi gradient property that I mean. Um, recall that the omega function is the same one as in the circular restricted theoretical problem. Those that know uh, the, how the Hills regions are, 
these, uh, uh, these plots are familiar to you. So when this, you must uh, see this picture in this way. First, from left to right. When theta is negative, uh, C decreases. That means that if a particle is here, in this part here, if you go um, forward in time, then the, um, the C decreases and the forbidden region opens. And then a particle that initially is trapped here is allowed to move to the other primary or even to escape. But on the other way, as time goes on, then you must return, and after when theta is positive, C increases, and then it's the other way around. So if a particle <coughs> arrives at this, at this uh, level, at this value of C, and it's outside the forbidden region, it's going to be outside forever. So it's going to escape. If a particle is trapped here in one of these uh, bounded components of a hill region, it's going to be captured for one of these uh, two primaries. And that's the main point. So this problem, the final evolution, we have only two final evolutions. So any orbit in this problem can, um, can only do one of these two things. First, it could be a capture orbit around non primary. That means that in the rotating frame, this distance is going to be zero. That means that we have collision manifolds. I'm not going to show you this, but you can analyze the equations, and then you can study the collision manifold, and you see that there is a two cylinder of equilibrium points and of the, the, the standard uh, stack. That's one thing. But so part of the orbits can just collide with uh, one of the two primaries. And the other is that uh, it would be an escape orbit. And uh, escape orbit means that when time to, tends to infinity, it does not approach one of the primaries. And I want to stress that inside these escape orbits, there are those that escape in a special configuration. I mean, all the orbits, if we look just, uh, this is valid forwards and backwards in time. I'm going to focus just forward in time. So if you look at forward in time, so the a stable manifold of the equilibrium points at the, at the upper boundary, the stable manifold, which is four-dimensional for the collinear ones, all that orbits, for definition, are escape orbits because they tend to an equilibrium point, so they do not approach one of the primaries, but they escape in a collinear configuration. Okay? Okay, so, and then this is, uh, uh, the, the C criterion uh, allows us just to, uh, if, you, if we have a, an initial condition, a winter rate initial condition, allow us to classify as a capture or escape, depending on, as a, what I show you here in this, in this plot, depending on if at certain time it's trapped here around these two uh, regions or it's outside here. That's it. It's, uh, it's only the, 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 the use of, of the evolution of these uh, hills regions. So the C criterion says if a certain point of time and the value of the Jacobi function is greater than C2, that means C2 is here in the middle, means that this is close, then uh, it's a capture orbit. Otherwise, if it's greater than C1, it's outside, it's located at the bonded component, then it's an escape orbit. That's, that is just a criterion to classify all the orbits. Okay, so let's see how uh, bridges and tails are generated. Uh, so the important thing is that the unstable manifolds, forward in time, let's see or only forward in time, the stable manifolds of the collinear equilibrium points are of codimension one. And the important <coughs> thing is that there are clinic connections between these stable manifolds and the collision manifold with the primaries. Just uh, a numerical simulation just to show you what I said, that the stable manifolds uh, separate, it's a um, uh, separatrix of different kinds of, of behaviors. This is just a, a, a toy in numerical exploration, if you want. We take initial conditions. So we have the line of the primaries, we have the two primaries, and we're going to take initial conditions on the line of the primaries with velocity perpendicular to, the, to that line. So due to the equations, all these orbits are symmetric. And we follow the orbits, and we classify them. Uh, there are only two possibilities. Well, well uh, let's say almost three. I mean, capture around uh, primary M1, red, capture around primary M2, blue, or escape. That's the, 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 the three different possibilities in one. But what happens here in the middle, which is this, what, is, what separates, the, I mean, I have an orbit, and as close as we want, 
we have orbits going towards one primary and orbits going towards the other primary. So in the middle must be, what's in the middle? What's, what's, what's the object that separates one behavior from the other behavior? And the only objects are the stable manifolds of the collinear equilibrium point. Just to show you, consider here a region where red, blue, and white are uh, close, all of them. And we consider orbits. OK, this is the x-axis. This is the uh, initial conditions. We have taken the initial conditions that the closest approach is theta equal to 0. And red ones perform a loop and end up here in M1. The blue ones perform a loop and end up in the other part. So what's here in the middle? What's in the middle is L2. So in the middle must be an orbit that tends to L2. That means that is a, an orbit of the stable manifold of the equilibrium point L2. And the same for uh, between uh, blue and white, for example. So between this orbit going to this, uh, this uh, primary, this blue orbit, and this black orbit escape, and here in the middle must be one tending to, here we kept L1, the equilibrium, the collinear equilibrium point. So let's see how bridges and days are generated. So we perform first a, a, a broad exploration. Uh, we fix a time before the closest approach. For example, theta minus pi a four. Doesn't matter which one. I mean, I want to start not too far from the closest approach, not too close. Then we fix an initial value of c such that the Hills regions are closed. That means that I'm going to consider initial conditions around one primary. As the as the my situation is this one here, the situation is our situation is this one here. All the particles will be here initially. Backwards in time, they will be trapped. So they all of these orbits, all of these orbits come from um, collision with the primary, with uh, capture with the primary. Okay. So we do this, and then we uh, fix uh, radius. And variant alpha and beta, which is alpha and beta, is are the, the velocities, the, the, the angles, the angles of the position of velocities. We consider all of these initial conditions and we simply follow them to see if they are, um, if they are captured or they are uh, uh, escape. And what, what we see is that for any value of c, any value of r, any value of mu, we always have blue, white, and, and red regions. And let me show, I have to, uh, excuse me, because there is a matter of, uh, oh. So consider here points in the red and white region, yeah? So the red ones are the red ones here. So this is a, a snapshot after the close encounter. So they start around the, the, the primary, there is a close encounter, and then we take a photo of the, all of them. So all the red ones are going towards this primary. The black ones correspond to the white region, so they escape. And the uh, thick uh, black points are the ones in the frontier which are going to a, collis a collinear equilibrium point. So as close as you want, you have points here escaping, points here going towards M1, and points staying in the middle. So just by continuation, you must obtain this uh, pair. And the same, uh, uh, the same mechanism is to split bridges. So the bridges is just this part between red and, and blue. So the mechanism to explain this, this connection is the heteroclinic connections between capture orbits and the key blue point. So I'm, I'm finishing. Um, that, so these points here belongs forward in time to capture orbit and uh, backwards in time, excuse me, and forwards in time uh, belongs to the stable manifold of the collinear equilibrium points. So these are the, um, this is the mechanism. And just to finish, we just did, I'm going to skip, but well, we did the same for different values of the, the, the mass ratio, you obtain always uh, um, <coughs> Uh, bridges and tails, no matter. We repeat also that the same, the same uh, uh, exploration as, as Stone Reactor, reconsidering only circular orbits, and we agree with them with the fact that the retrograde orbits uh, contribute more to the formation of uh, bridges and tails than the other ones. 
And the conclusion is that the existence of these heteroclinic connections is the mechanism that explains the formation of rigid proteins in this very simple model, which is the uh, restricted parabolic free body problem. And thank you. Thank you.